Hey everyone, Techni here with a review of the JBL wireless gaming headset, the Quantum 600. Now as far as in your box, and by the way, the box is very premium, nice magnetic on the side, hard cardboard right here, nice display with some info, then you get your headset and underneath it you get all your accessories. And as far as the accessories that you get in the box right here, you're going to get your USB charging cable and update cable, which we're going to talk a lot about here in a second. You get 3.5 to 3.5 with volume control and mic mute on there your USB dongle to work wireless, and then a box of paperwork with all your warranty info and a quick start guide, and of course, your headset. Now, if any of us have ever seen any of my other headset reviews, you all know I love starting with comfort. That is number one for me, but I wanna start a little bit different with this headset. Like I just stated, as far as updating everything, and you can actually go on Amazon right now, and you're gonna see tons of negative one-star reviews as far as, I'm not sure if it's for the 600s, but I know it's for the 800s. And again, they sync up and kinda you know work with each different device the exact same as far as being wireless. And why I wanna start right there is because again, I did have issues setting the headset up myself as well. Mainly my fault and I'm not sure what everyone else's issues are having but it's a pain to sync up. Again, you got to update your dongle, you got to update your headset, you got to have this plugged in, then you got to have the headset plugged in by the USB. And it's again, you got like five different steps that come up on the screen, tell you what to do, when it's happening, and it takes a little while. So again, it's usually pretty confusing. A lot of wireless headsets, you can pretty much take the headset, take the dongle, plug it in, turn it on, and it's going to update, right? But again, I had multiple different steps I had to do to update this headset to make it work. And honestly, the first time I used it, I said, well, something's wrong here, something's not right. I had to actually go in there, reset the headset back to factory settings, follow the steps again to get it working right. So all in all, my main point right here, why I wanted to cover that first off there is to disregard the negative reviews you're seeing right there. Follow the steps as far as setting it up right there and you're gonna be perfect. All right, so let's get into the headset review right here, diving right into comfort. And let me tell you what, straight out the box, the first thing I noticed, again, comparing to like the 100s we recently reviewed are these super plush ear cushions right here. Plenty of depth in them, plenty of size. My ears fit completely inside of them and they do not touch the drivers inside there but these ear cushions are incredibly soft and plush yes they are completely pleather inside and out so your ears are gonna get quite spicy in there now unfortunately as far as the ear cushions for me at least I cannot remove them right here I mean I tug on them quite firm right here and they do not slide out I don't want to go any further I get a little worried I'm gonna ruin them you also have plenty of movement with this headset it goes all the way flat and a little bit forward right there plenty of movement in and out and everything so again no certain pressure points right there it's gonna fit on any sort of head shape now as far as a headband as well super stinking plush right there now there's a little tricky thing about this right on the side over here about an inch worth of plastic right there so when you press in bam it goes right to plastic which I'll show you in a second that's actually the bracket from the extendable arm right there that goes into there but right in the middle where the point of your head is gonna be pressing super super soft and cozy and also as far as a headband right here, you have plenty of adjustment nice clicks right out there it is a little bit softer than we see in some of them but it does hold its position right there and you have plenty of adjustment now the one downfall as far as comfort for me at least this is gonna be different for everybody is the clamping force was a pinch tight you know it was a little bit tight I wouldn't say it's like you know giving me these pressure points or you know uncomfortable by any means but again I did feel them kind of clamp into my head they don't move around at all I know a lot of people out there say hey man well don't test the headset with a hat on whenever I test my headset and I'm gaming I am not wearing my hat all right so let's get into a really cool topic right here with this headset talking about the build and again if you saw my review of the 100s I wasn't very happy with that build it just felt chintzy and cheap you know what I mean but this guy is the complete opposite. Number one, starting with the arm bracket going into the head, the ear cups right here. Very nice, thick, durable plastic. It doesn't flex by any mean. It just feels very durable and quality in the hand. Now this bit right here really excited me. Scared me at first, but then when I started dabbling with it, it was super cool. You all know I do my flex test and really bend them up and everything, which by the way, you can twist this guy up with no worry whatsoever. But check this out. Whenever I do my stretch right here, you hear it popping right there? Look what happens. The whole headband inside pops off, but bear with me, that's not a bad thing at all, right? You see how you got the notches down in there and it's showing how it can bend and flex right there? By the way, there's that little bracket I was talking about earlier as far as the headphone uh, or the headband extending out. That's where it locks into. So the cool thing about that, 
keep an eye on that right there, right? You're not just going into that arm and you have that one point of stress point right there. It's going up in there and you have that entire bracket up in there. I absolutely love that because again, you're not just getting that one stress point right there on the end of the headband. It goes entirely into there. And it's so cool how stinking flexible this thing is. I mean, you can bend this thing with no worries. And if anything happens, again, that just pops out, bam, bring it back in there and it pops right back in. So I gotta say, that is super cool and innovative right there. Maybe one of the best headbands I have tested in a headset. I absolutely love that. I don't see anything going wrong with the headband as far as snapping up there and everything. That is incredibly awesome. Now going right along with that fantastic build, they do have a little bit of weight to them. They're not like incredibly uncomfortably heavy or anything like that. But again, I'd say more of like a durable weight, if that makes sense, right? Coming on my scale, they're coming at 352 grams. But again, they're not like ridiculously heavy, but you do feel that quality in them. Now, as far as the controls and functions on the headset right here, starting with the left back ear cup here, you have your game to chat control. It's really cool. Right when you get in the middle of it there, you have a little tight kind of bump right there, just to let you know you are halfway right there. You have your volume control max to lowest there. This button right down here is your mic off button, which is kind of weird because whenever you flip up the mic, it actually mutes. Kind of crazy to have both functions right there. Um, you also have this little indicator right there is as far as your sync. Whenever you're syncing up to your dongle, that will flash right there. You have a 3.5 jack right there, which you can run into like a, a controller or any audio device, cell phone or anything like that. Your charge port, USB-C. On the right back ear cup, not much. You have your little power indicator light right there and then your power button, which you just flick up and you can see it goes up a little bit more right there. When you actually hold it up right there, that is the sync position. Now, now, as you can see on both ear cups here, you do have RGB as far as the JBL logo, which you can customize and adjust that, which we will look at in the software here in a second. Also on a microphone, you do have your mute and active light right on the end there. All right, so now let's get into the next biggest topic and that is gonna be sound. And by the way, with them being wireless, of course you gotta charge them. JBL states they take two hours to charge and with the RGB off, you can get 14 hours of battery life with them. As far as me, any wireless product I use, whenever I'm not gaming, I just plug it in and charge it overnight so it's ready to roll for me and it never died on me and I always left the RGB on. Now as far as the sound itself right here with the JBL Quantum 600s we are using 50 millimeter drivers with the frequency range of 20 to 20,000 right here and let me tell you what straight out the box taking it out plugging in and playing the sound was horrible. It was just bad. It was flat. It was muffled and a little bit muddy right there. So again, when you get it out of your box, plug it up right there. Don't kind of judge it right from there. Get that software fired up. Get in there and really dabble with it and kind of bring it up to your sound setting. You have EQ settings. You have quantum surround sound. You have DTS. You have all sorts of different settings to adjust this guy from. And again, it really took me sitting into a game. I play a lot of Modern Warfare these days, sitting into there and dabbling with it in game to really dial it in to my specific liking. And talking about dialing it in to my specific liking right here is a little bit different with this headset compared to other ones I've used. Number one, I think that combination of that you know, a little bit tighter than medium clamping for, so the drivers are gonna be a little bit closer to my ears at least. Again, this was for me. And then the fully pleather ear cushions right there, locking in all that sound. Again, it was a little bit more bass in there, so if you like bass, you gotta win, right? Um, but again, it just kinda had a little bit more bass, and I kinda like a little bit more highs, the bass kinda being down here doing its job. So again, I kinda had to round out my e EQ settings a little bit different than some of the other headsets I use. But all in all, when you get it dialed in right there, you have a really nice, nice immersive sound. Yes, there is still a little bit more on the bass end. So again, like I stated, if you like bass, you have a complete win right here. It's not a real thumpy shaken bass or anything like that, but it's a really nice, solid, immersive bass. But now as far as it having that really immersive, solid bass right there, it was a little bit tougher than some other headsets to pick up footsteps. I had to have a different EQ setting if I wanted that option in there. I really didn't get both of them, right, if that makes sense. Because sometimes the bass overtook the highs just a pinch. Again, if I was playing Warzone, I couldn't really tell if someone was above me or sneaking up behind me. That was the biggest downfall there. Again, I had to create a different EQ setting if I wanted to play that type of game. And whenever I had that EQ set in active, it was fantastic, it really was. You can hear all the footsteps around you and all the details and everything. But again, I really couldn't dial it in to any certain setting to get both in one. But like I always state, sound preference 
preference is gonna be different for everybody. And the cool thing about this headset is again, all the options you have. Choose from the multiple surround sound options, choose from your EQ settings, and you're gonna be able to dial it in to your preferred sound. Now, as far as the sound stage and the usability on all the different platforms right there, the one stinker is it doesn't transfer the sound settings from your PC whenever you're dabbling with it into the software, into the headset, and then into your console. That's kind of a stinker, but again, the bass sound stage running that way is pretty clear, but it's again a stinker that you can't really dabble it there. The RGB does also transfer whenever you're using it on PS4 fired up with the dock here now for every other platform as far as like a switch or Xbox one you have to run 3.5 but you have your mic control right here and then your volume wheel and by the way the RGB does not work when you use it that way all right so now that I got done talking about all that sound right there I want to pop over and do the mic test here and while I'm doing this mic test I'm gonna fire up the JBL software and kind of show you some of those settings I was just talking about let's test out this mic all right so we are now using a microphone on the JBL quantum 600s right here by the way just to clear up if you hear any sort of static or fuzziness in the background i do have my pc running about uh four feet from me right here and i have my fan on medium because it is extremely hot today but anyways as far as the software uh, first off it looks a little funky right they got this whole futuristic look on here it's just a lot of lines everywhere and just again it just looks confusing at first but it's quite easy your equalizer right here again as you can see you can adjust any of these right here you have some presets over here by the way whenever you can adjust any of these presets also once you adjust them it puts this little asterisk on the side right over here as you can see i have my bass boost right over here which i like to boost up some bass i've been jacking with this one a little bit here Anyways, bass cut. This is like my standard EQ, maybe not as dramatic as a, a dip right here, but this is like my standard I use in a lot of other headsets, and I just couldn't get it to really dial in on this headset. But again, not this dramatic. Um, come down here to FPS, and this is what I started using, this kind of setting for a lot of Warzone. Again, it brought the bass and the mids down a little bit, really brought out some of those foot uh, footsteps there. I really like this type of EQ for this headset. But again, sounds going to be different per everybody. But again, it is super cool. You got some preset ones in here and you can adjust every single thing to dial it into your liking so you're going to be able to get the sound that you like coming over here to lighting plenty of different options you got basic mode right here which will keep it pretty much solid coming here to advanced and you can cut it in here as far as different uh, colors per section right there different effects close it out and then you have these other kinds which is showing what it will cycle through which is pretty much what you're doing here you're going to create your own cycle and then how fast it's going to go in I just keep it on basic solid color <laughs> or you can click it off right here and get that extended battery life spatial sound now this is kind of uh confusing here first off you got quantum surround sound and basic right here your head shape or head size it's asking you i kept it on medium i tried on others and i couldn't tell a difference now you get in here click on advanced and really dial in your size right here i have no idea what your body height has to do with this. I adjusted it all the way up here to eight feet, which I'm not. Brought it all the way down here to two feet, which also I'm not. And I did not hear a single difference. I didn't. So I kept it at my uh, regular height right there, right at six. And it sounded the same no matter what I adjusted right there. Talking quantum sound, it just sounded... Uh, I don't even want to say open or like surround sound. It just sounded like I was speaking in uh, like an empty hall. I could not stand the quantum surround sound, but that was me at least. It didn't open up footprints or environment or anything like that. It just made everything sound distant and a little bit echoey to me. Now, DTS, when you fired up this one, sounded really nice. Gave some really nice body to the environment and the whole atmosphere around you. I really like that. But also, when you keep it on off, you got that great JBL uh, sound right there, and I really liked it. And I I usually preferred it off honestly it sounded the best that way for me at least come over here to microphone again you have mic level which we're doing right now mic volume as you see right now we have it on 49 percent right there but you can crank it all the way up if you want and then you have side tone um, and then also on the headset don't forget that you can control your game to voice chat right there as far as how much you want to hear right on the headset system software again this is what i talked about earlier as far as uh, updating stuff where i had issues with it and you can tell a lot of other people do with the reviews online if you have issues with it and something's not working out come down here factory reset and just follow the steps again trust me I, I had it messed up at first as well so if you have any issues just factory reset and follow the steps step by step again um, and then help right down here which is 
actually pretty cool um, for Spatial Sound. You can come down here and it gives you a basic rundown of what each different thing is. I really like that. It's just a nice little help, helpful hand right there as far as whenever you're adjusting stuff. Okay, what is this exactly right there? Up here you can see what it's connected by, 2.4, and then your battery level. Now the other cool thing about this too is you can pop it right down here to a little small deal and just give you your basics right there if you're in game bam you can just pop this up instead of having all this stuff right in your face bam you just have all your necessities right there all right so as far as our microphone right there i thought it sounded pretty stinking good now it does weird me out still how you got that mute button right on the back right there the microphone on off and then you can also flip up to mute just weird to have two options. And it is very nice to have that notification light right there so you know when it is muted or not. And again, it also comes with that windscreen. All right, so all in all, GBO Quantum 600, and what are my final thoughts right here? I think it's a great headset. Is it worth 150 bucks? For PC, yes. All right, it is worth 150 bucks for PC because that's where you really optimize. I mean, it says optimized for PC right on the box anyways, right? And that's what I kind of put it as. It is a PC headset. And maybe if you dabble with a little bit of console on the side or something, okay, then you can use it there. And again, it sounds decent on those, but again, where it shines is PC. And that's what I'm gonna recommend it as, a PC headset. So hey, let me know what you think about the JBL Quantum 600 headset right here, or heck, any of the other ones if you've used them yet. Again, I did already review the 100s, which I will plug at the end of this video, so you can check those out as well. And I'm also gonna review some more JBL Quantum headsets coming up, so make sure you smash that subscribe button and hit that little bell right down there so you'll be notified when those come out as well. But hey, thank you so much for stopping by and watching this video. I hope I was able to help you out if you're looking in this headset and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to future tech videos. Hey, I hope I catch you in the next one. Bye now.